We've come to Magdala. We're right at the foot of our bell, just next to the Sea of Galilee. And I'm going to be reading from Luke 7, where it talks about the event that doesn't have any geographic description in the scriptures. But its proximity to chapter 8 ties it to this area of Mary Magdalene. It says, And then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to eat with a Pharisee and sat down. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. The scene is Jesus having a meal at one of the religious leaders' homes. And as he sat there, a woman slipped in the back and everyone began to hear the sound of her weeping. And then she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them. And then she kissed his feet and anointed them with this alabaster flask of fragrant oil. This woman took a flask, broke it, poured out the oil onto Jesus, wiped her hair on his feet, and kissed him. Of course, this for anybody would have been a scene that would have caused them to wonder what's going on. And so one of the Pharisees, the, one, the, the host who invited him, when he saw this, he thought inside himself, saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who this was and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. What's interesting is he thought all this. This Pharisee thought that in his mind. And what he thought is, she's a sinner, but he didn't think he was. And so, verse 40, Jesus answered and said to him. Now this is where it gets fascinating. The man is thinking it, and Jesus knew what he was thinking. And Jesus answered his thought, which must have made him feel very unnerved. And he said, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he said, Teacher, say it. And verse 41 of Luke 7, there were a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. One owed 500 days work and the other only owed 50. So a 10 times greater debt. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? A simple story. Jesus said, if you're, he, if you're forgiven ten times as much as the other, which one would be more grateful? And Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And Jesus said, you have rightly judged. And then he turned to the woman and he said, do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet, which was a normal custom. And she washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Jesus so clearly said that there was no love shown by all of those who invited him to the meal. But this uninvited woman sought him out, knowing she was such a great sinner, pouring out her love on Christ. But then verse 48 of chapter 7 of Luke, Then Jesus said to the woman, Your sins are forgiven. That's the greatest possession anyone could ever have. Jesus said, your sins, all of them are forgiven. And then those who sat at the table, verse 49, with him began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? That's why we've come to Galilee, to look at who Jesus is. Jesus is the one who forgives sins. That's who he is. Only God can forgive sins. Only God has the ability to pay the price for our sins. This Simon that invited Christ thought he was great because of his righteousness, his self-righteousness, his law-keeping, but he still, in scriptural terms, was covered with sins. This woman knew she was covered with sins. Simon did not acknowledge he was covered with sins. This woman confessed by her, her grief, her sorrow, her tears, that she needed forgiveness. Simon didn't seek, ask for, or even want forgiveness. And Jesus said, your sins are forgiven.
the real question for each of us is to answer this statement of those at the table. Who is this who even forgives sins? And then Jesus answers that with verse 50. And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Jesus sent away this woman with forgiveness, with his shalom, his peace, which means she was complete now. All of her sins were forgiven. What's fascinating is chapter 8 opens with, and it came to pass afterward, after this dinner, after this event, that he went through every city and village, and certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities followed him. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. It's very possible the woman who anointed Jesus was Mary, who had all those demons. We've come here to consider who Jesus is. He is the one who forgives sins. And right here at this ancient first century synagogue, what you see behind me is the only exposed with first century coins synagogue of this whole area along the plain of Gennesaret all the way up to Capernaum. Capernaum, fourth century synagogue. Magdala, first century synagogue. It is very likely that Jesus Christ taught here in one of his most beloved disciples' home, Mary of Magdala. We're in Magdala. Mary was from here. This is the synagogue that she would have come to. This is the place where Jesus would have taught. Behind us, the trade route of the Via Mara swept up the coast to Damascus. And right here, this woman filled with joy of being forgiven, shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. One last note, which is fascinating. At the cross of Jesus Christ, Matthew records that the very last one standing at the cross as Jesus died was Mary of Magdala. And then it also records that Jesus came and appeared to Mary of Magdala first. She was the last at the cross, the first at the tomb. She was the first one that got to see Christ. Why? Because to whom much has been forgiven, the same loves much. Do you consider yourself the greatest sinner you know? If you do, then you have great love for Jesus if you have asked him to forgive your sins. What a blessing to be in Magdala right here in the land of the book.